It's oh, well, we here's oh, yeah, so you want to keep going? Okay. Uh, well, so this is the cover of issue two. That's Ooh. by Tula Lote. So she, cute. I know. Um, yeah, she, um, I mean, Tula is amazing, and she actually draws like a lot of different body types. Which for some reason, when she first drew Avery, who is the main character, we have not talked about the story or characters at all, and we probably won't. But anyway, that's Avery. Uh, she's the hero, and uh, and she at first drew her like quite slender, and I was like, okay, like let just more more ass, and I just sent her like so many pictures of asses, uh, and and then so and then. And, 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 the boots weren't high enough, and I was like, you gotta get the, the boots right up to the ass. Anyway, and then when she originally drew it, to, in order to um, send it, or like put it on the server, she put all these censored stickers on it, but it was originally like not supposed to have them, and I was like, please keep the censored stickers, because I love them. Uh, so that's gonna be out in October, and then this is Alejandra Gutierrez's uh, um, cover for issue three. Uh, she was, uh, again, she was like, oh, I was thinking that it would make it like an evil angel porn DVD cover and then actually like take a picture of myself, this is her uh, manicure, uh, like with it as if it is a DVD cover. And I was like, girl, please, yes, design my life. Uh, so I love that one. And then uh, this is uh, Tula Lote uh, cover of issue four and then Tula just did this. This is the cover of issue five, so. Uh, yeah, nobody has seen. This is when it gets to a Netflix spinoff. Kind of how that <laughs> we'll see. We'll see who has the who wins the bidding war. Uh, have we shown everything? Well, there's one special thing that we didn't show, but maybe oh, you yeah. didn't put it in the slideshow. Uh, wow, just for special things. This is great. Um, Jack the Stripper. Uh, we talked about hustlers earlier. Jack was in that part of consulting on that. When it comes to sex worker made comics jack has like changed the game she's got people buying her merch all over That's the place actually, what the fuck is wrong with me that is a perfect example of a I queer know. sex work comic I, I think it's because she is also so like multi-hyphenate it took yeah. a minute to be like oh right That's i was like oh yeah started. she also did that just yeah. like drawing these like little like one panel things yeah that really work on instagram very well and then took the fuck off so you have a collaboration yeah unique to I'm covering up one with another. Uh, you you need on. to, um, it's going to be done in December, right? So people only have like a limited amount of time to get it. Yeah, so Jack is a multi-hyphenate and does a million things. And one of the things that she does is, so who has, who owns or has seen the caps or the sweatshirts or the sports bras that say tip her or tip that? Y'all know? Okay, so that's Jack the Stripper. You probably know that. And you can get her merch that says Tipper and a bunch of other things like strippers, strippers are people, uh, and like off-duty stripper, at, uh, at strippersforever.com, which is her web store. Uh, and she's done a couple of partnership collaborations, like collections, I, like I said, I don't know anything about fashion, so the fact that I'm like, I have a collection, I'm like, what the fuck, <laughs> um, for my comic book. Uh, but yeah, so I was like, Jack, can we, I don't know how to make merch, I like, don't know how to design shirts, you are the best can we collaborate? And she was like, oh, I have a whole like little clubhouse system now. So for three months, it's already launched. So if you go to strippersforever.com right now, you can get the merch that Jack and I designed together. You can get these denim hats that say Dirty Mind that represent the Dirty Mind, which is the underground collective of queer punk sex workers in this story. You can get these pillowcases. This is my favorite, my absolute favorite. I'm bringing this to my straight job. <laughs> Would you like to say what it says, Melissa? It says, can you explain this gap in your resume? <laughs> okay. oh, that, is, that, is a, that is a line that a, a villainous person says in the story, and I, when I asked Jack, like, what, what is like the one quote from issue one that you would want to put on some merch, and she was like, let's, let's do that, and let's put it on a fucking dirty pillow. So, uh, and then Jack also designed um, like her version of the Dirty Mind, so that is on uh, the pillows, and then you can also get it uh, on a t-shirt in various sizes. You can get this tank top that says sex, love, and torture, what? which is really what <laughs> this comic is about. And yeah, you can also get pillows that say sex, love, and torture, and you can also get incredibly soft hoodies that have the, the Dirty Mind illustration on the back. I like couldn't believe how soft it was, to be honest. And I think that's it. 
but yeah, so only till December. And only until December. Yeah, we can't sell them to you this evening, so you really no, do you have to go exclusively online. Exclusively available at strippersforever.com. That is owned and operated by a queer femme sex worker, Jack the Stripper, uh, and so all of like when you when you purchase from Jack or when you purchase from the Dirty Mind Collection, you're supporting Jack, and when you purchase the Dirty Mind Collection, you are supporting me, and that is money that I'm going to put into back into the comic because. When you're with Image Comics, you're basically running your own business. So um, I'm gonna put it back into the comic and also use it to like pay the amazing, uh, you know, in the future. I'd like to be able to pay the models who are modeling things and you know pay people who sit on cakes at Blue Stockings um, uh, for us, which is maybe. Yeah. Do you want to? What do you want to do? Do you want to segue to that, or do you have some you questions have, you no, want to take? Well, do you have any more questions for me? No. <laughs> I mean, we could just keep doing this. I mean, this is literally what happened. We haven't seen each other for a couple of years after we both left San Francisco, both came to New York, and like I think we sat and talked for like five hours. I didn't like leave your house. I had to do like a remote book party for my book, and oh, I just yeah. like got on Skype in your apartment. And was like, hi, we're just gonna do this now. Oh, but I yeah. couldn't. So this could go on forever. I can't tear myself away from you. No, it's really good. But this is your choice. Consent time. Do you want to take some questions from folks who are here? Do you want to get to as the long as they're questions <laughs> and not and, statements? And and I've already been given permission to be like very stern yes. about this. Okay, I see one right here. Um, hi, I have a question about uh, what comics or other dystopian types of fiction maybe you looked at as like inspiration or references for the story. If what? You did at all? Yeah, what a great question. Uh, I would say a really big comic influence for comic book influence for me is Bitch Planet, which is an incredible comic that is now collected into trade paperbacks, which I am uh, almost positive that they have here at, at Blue Stockings. And uh, that is, uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of tweaking up the absurdity of the world that we already live in, uh, it is. It's just, it's really incredible. So I highly recommend Bitch Planet, going back a little bit to like the era when Melissa and I were like dreaming about how one day we would get Sandman tattoos. Um, uh, the Invisibles uh, is a comic series that is about um, sort of a punk underground that was just hugely influential in my life and, and had a lot of queer specificity, which was and kink, kink and BDSM and leather specificity that was really important to me. And magic and time travel. And, all and also magic and time travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally, exactly. Um, I and mean, who knows, maybe we're going to get there with this. But who knows? <laughs> and movie-wise, I was really inspired by the Terry Gilliam movie Brazil, which if you haven't seen, I highly recommend. <laughs> and uh, Children of Men. And um, why am I blanking? Uh, yeah, also if you just like want to talk sci-fi, we can talk sci-fi anytime you want. Cool. More questions? Yeah. Uh, what has been your experience working with Image and do you hope to do more comics in the future? I fucking love Image. Uh, I was like a wayward, queer, wandering in the desert saying, won't someone can give a home to my Yay be, um, and uh, and uh, and uh, you know, Lauren McCubbin really helped me uh, in in sending the first because we had I wrote the first six out of the seven scripts that are going to be in this first arc, which is like the first season of television uh, already, and uh, and uh, several of the uh, issues have been drawn, and so I r I was able to sort of send Eric Stevenson at Image, uh, the publisher of Image, uh, you know, already a, a fully like realized world and character and, and story and, and art and ideas. And he just got right back to us and was so supportive right away. Uh, and there was no, you know, there was just no like question about whether the fisting would stay in the picture, whether the vibrators would stay in the picture, whether the trans love would stay in the picture, like whether or not the like political messages about censorship would stay in the picture so you know they were just like yeah like let's put it out the way that it is it's perfect the way that it is so um it's been incredible working with them and like their i know this might be tedious but like their publicity team and their direct marketing team and like everybody there has been so supportive and really communicative and and um yeah like doing their jobs it's incredible uh and yeah i would love to write comics forever and so please buy mine, and then I, then they will, everyone will know 
that they just should keep hiring to me. to underscore how fantastic they're being to you, that is not something you can take for granted, putting a piece of media out into the world about sex work, from personal experience, yeah. but also, like, this is huge, that this is something that they want to do, that they're giving you that kind of, like, rock star rollout for, and, like, maybe it'll open the door for other people who would also like to Thank do you for comics. saying that. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. That is incredibly important to me, the idea that, you know, especially because of the privilege that I have as a white person and as a cis person and, uh, you know, being able to sort of pick and choose when I am out about my background in sex work and how I frame it um, in a way that I, like, sense like might be palatable to people and sort of like pull back or, or push on it a little bit. So I, I try to be more assertive and out, even though uh, despite my privilege, that also endangers me and, and limits my ability to do my uh, the jobs that I'm trying to do now in, in lots and lots of ways. But I really hope that with that work, it creates more space for more queer stories and more just like straight up women writing and creating comics. Mm -hmm. uh, just on a basic level, um, and, and sex workers telling their own, like both sex worker representation in terms of the world and the characters and, and the stories, but then also the creators, uh, because the, the character, like character representation is super important, but like those people are made up and so they're not getting paid, but the creators, uh, we, we would like to get paid in real life with real money. Um, <laughs> and yeah. One more question, I don't miss you. Sure. It's awesome. fine with me. Okay, the first one is, um, so I tend to be an on-the-go techie, so is it possible there's a digital version? That way I don't have to like have a lot of books with me. Uh, totally. So um, if you go to the image website and, and search for SFSX or Safe Sex or Tina Warren, um, all of the links to digital ways that you can read it are on there. Comixology is great. Um, the, yeah, the, the short answer is yes, and it's if you're already tech savvy, it's really easy to find. Awesome, good to know. And then the second one is, I tend to be a person that doesn't want to wait forever for the next issue to come out. So is it a case of where you already know the timeline for all of the issues, or is it going to be like this long arc where you're not sure? I, I can I can tell you exactly when to expect every every issue for the next year. Uh, so basically, this is issue one, and for for those who who don't real who like maybe thought that they were coming here and like getting like a hot, like a graphic novel, uh, and then we're like, what is this magazine? Um, <laughs> well, it's only three ninety nine, so um, so it's it's like the it's like the pilot of a of a TV show, right? It's like the first episode of a TV show, and there's a cliffhanger at the end, uh, and you have to wait a whole month. You guys remember when you had to wait a whole month to, or a whole week to find out what would happen? Um, and uh, so hopefully you're like walking around being like, what happens? What happens? Like with every breath, uh, and uh, and then you'll pre-order. Uh, or you can subscribe to the series, you can pre-order them from Blue Stockings or your local comic book store, and then issue two will be out in October, the, this is the 25th um, of, uh, of every month, and then issue three in November, uh, and so on and so forth until March, which is when issue seven, which is the end of the first arc, which like I said, is like the first season of television, uh, which is called Protection, by the way, get it? Safe sex protection? And, uh, and then the trade, which is the collection of those first seven floppy issues, will be out in June 2020, and we are all geared up to make a second arc that will start coming out a year from today Amazing. in September 2020. Wow. Um, I have one question for you. Is Wednesday still new comic book day? Yeah. Like, I like literally yeah. remember like you just yes. like brought me back like when the Invisibles yeah. was out, going to the comic book store, not always the most welcoming place to hang out, True. especially in like 1999, yeah. 2000. This is a much cooler place to spend your comic book day. Um, so 100%. I hope people do and come back and also join Blue Stockings, join become us. a member of Blue Stockings. Um, it is so important, it allows us to do things like this to be here with you and we are going to continue to be here with you for something very special oh my god like very <laughs> special not like very special like very 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 special very very <laughs> special so all it's why there is a tarp it's why, oh yes yeah, so you've been wondering why the tarp <laughs> why that off gassing smell yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. um so we are going to have a cake sitting <laughs> Oh, 
by Lindsay Dye, New York City's premier cake center. special to me not only because it is a it, it's a moment of very fetishy deliberately fetishy celebration and maybe magic um, but uh, also because uh, Lindsay herself is an out sex worker in as a, as a fine art as a fine artist and as a performance artist uh, and it's incredibly important to me to to include sex workers and sex work creators um, in everything that I do so that is fucking rad and she looks amazing and the and when I say she I mean Lindsay but also the cake who is, who is a Libra and uses she or pronouns two Libras. <laughs> And, um, and Lindsay's gonna sing too. I can't even fucking believe it. So we're gonna take five. So don't go anywhere. Uh, why would you? And we're gonna get set up. And uh, oh, oh, one last thing uh, about the cake sit, which is that. Okay. So when I say Melissa, I have a question. Yes. <laughs> this is my party, so I'm just gonna keep talking. <laughs> uh, when, when, I, when you think about the idea of throwing money at women. Does does that seem like a like a degrading thing to do, or a super honoring, respectful thing to do? You have to choose one or the other. <laughs> or I mean, see, fill in the blank. It's not just because we were in a bargaining session at work today, <laughs> but I was like, yeah, throw money at me. Like I instantly just thought of myself. So yes, of course. Yeah. Wonderful. Please do more of it. More money. So, just so we're all clear. When we throw money at Lindsay during her cake sitting performance, wh what are we demonstrating? Love. Love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and respect, and maybe magic, right? Um, money so, for more cakes. Yes, You're money, money, money for burger. more. I got more art. Um, and yeah, sex worker joy and resilience. So um, I have in my little um, piggy purse from Rainbow uh, some some ones which a very nice um, uh, service person uh, ran and uh, got for me at the bodega, I think. Um, but if you have ones or uh, other kinds of bills, uh, please, I would like to encourage you to throw them at Lindsay uh, during the performance, uh, or just like if you don't get a chance to, just hand it or afterwards um but but please please we clarified beforehand please grow do not approach the cake or the cake sitter uh even you know there there's different rules for different spaces and in this one we prefer you keep your fucking distance